Good morning, everyone. We are back again, going to continue on with the mystical Kabbalah. And yesterday we went over, what did we go over? The Yoga of the West was what we went over. Discussed a little bit of the differences between Eastern and Western and how they go about it. And today we are going to be going over what? The Choice of a Path is the title of it. So, I guess, welcome to the Arcanum Luminarium. Alrighty, so, on to chapter two, the choice of a path. No student will ever make any progress in spiritual development who flits from system to system. First using some new thoughts, thought affirmations, then some yoga breathing exercises and meditative postures, and follow these by an attempt at the mystical methods of prayer. Each of these systems has its value, but that value can only be realized if the system is carried out in its entirety. The they are the calisthenics of consciousness and aim at gradually developing the power of the mind. The value does not lie in the prescribed exercises as ends in themselves, but in the powers that will be developed if they are persevered with. If we intend to take our occult studies seriously and make of them anything more than the, the sultry light reading, we must choose our system and carry it out faithfully until we arrive. If not at its ultimate goal, at any rate, at defi definite, definite practical results in a permanent enhancement of consciousness. After this has been achieved, we may not, without advan advantage, exper experiment with the methods that have been developed upon other paths, and build up an eclectic technique and philosophy therefrom. But the student who sets out to be an eclectic before he has made himself an expert, he will never be anything more than a dabbler. Whoever has any practice experience of the different methods of spiritual development knows that the method must fit the temperament, and that it must also adapt to the grade of the development of the student. Westerners especially, such as prefer the occult to the mystical path, often come seeking initiation at a stage of spiritual development which an Eastern guru would consider exceedingly immature. Any method that is to be available for the West must have its lower grades a technique which can be used as a stepping stone by these underdeveloped students. To ask them to rise immediately to the metaphysical heights is useless in the case of the great majority and prevents a start from the very beginning. For a system of spiritual development to be applied in the West, it must fulfill certain well-defined requirements. To begin with, its elementary techniques must be such that it is readily grasped by the mind that have have in them nothing of the mystic. Secondly, the forces it brings to bear to stimulate the development of the higher aspects of consciousness must be the f sufficiently powerful and concentrated to penetrate the rel relatively dense vehicles of the average Westerner, who makes nothing whatsoever of subtle vibrations. Thirdly, as, a f as few Europeans follow a racial dharma of material development, have either the opportunity or the inclination to lead the life of a recluse. The forces employed must be handled in such a way that they can be made available during the brief periods that the modern man or woman can, at the commencement of the path, snatched from their daily advocation to give up, give to the pursuit. They must, that is to say, be handled by a technique which enabled them to be readily concentrated and equally readily dispersed. Because it is not possible to maintain these high psychic tensions while living the hard, driving life of the citizen of a European city, experience proves with unfailing regularity that the methods of the psychic development which are effectual and satisfactory for the recluse produce neuro neurotic conditions and breakdowns in persons who pursue them while compelling to endure the strain of modern life. So take time for you. So much the worse for a modern life, some may say, and adduce this undeniable fact as an argument for the modifying our western ways of living. Far be it from me to maintain that our civilization is perfect or that wisdom originated and will die with us. 
But it appears to me that if our karma or destiny has caused us to be incarnated in the body of a certain racial type and temperament, it must be concluded that 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 is the discipline and experience which the lords of karma consider we need in this incarnation, and that we shall not advance the cause of our evolution by avoiding or evading it. I have seen so many attempts at spiritual development that were simply evasions of life's problems that I am suspicious of any system which involves a breach with the group soul of the race. Nor am I impressed by the dedication to the higher life which manifests itself by peculiarities of clothing and bearing and by the manner of cutting or omitting the hair, the cutting of the hair. True spirituality never advertises itself. The racial dharma of the West is the conquest of the dense matter. If this were realized, it would explain many problems in the relationships of West and East. In order that we may conquer dense matters and develop the concrete minds, we are endowed by our racial heritage with a particular type of physical body and nervous system, just as other races, such as the Mongolians and others, are endowed with other types. It is injudious to apply one type of psychophysical makeup making up the developing methods adapted to another. They will either fail to produce adequate results or produce unforeseen and possibly undesirable results. To say this is not to condemn the Eastern methods, nor decree the Western Constitution, which is as God made it, but to affirm the only adage that one man's meat is another man's poison. The Dharma of the West differs from that of the East. Is it therefore desirable to try to implant Eastern ideas in a Westerner? Withdrawal from the earth plane is not his line of progress. The normal, healthy Westerner has no desire to escape from life. His urge is to conquer it and reduce it to order and harmony. It is only a pathological types who long to cease upon the midnight with no pain, to be free from the wheel of birth and death. The normal Western temperament demands life. More life. It is this concentration of life force that the Western occultist seeks in his operation. He does not try to escape from the matter into spirit, leaving an unconquered country behind him and to get the best as it may. He wants to bring the Godhead down into manhood and make divine law prevail even in the kingdom of the shades. This is the root motive for the acquisition of occult power upon the right-hand path, and explains why initiates do not abandon all the mystic divine union but cultivate a white magic. It is this white magic which consists in the application of occult powers to a spiritual end, by means of which a large portion of the train and development of Western aspirations is carried out. I have seen something of good many different systems, and in my opinion the person who tries to dispense with ceremonial is working at a great disadvantage. Development by meditation alone is a slow process in the West, because the mind stuff upon which it has to work and the mental atmosphere in which the work has to be done are very resistant. The only purely meditative school of Western yoga is that of the Quakers, and I think that they would agree that their path is for the few. The Catholic Church combines mantra yoga with bhakti yoga. It is by means of formulation that the occultist selects and concentrates the forces he wishes to work with. These formulae are based upon the Kabbalistic tree of life and whatever systems he may be working with. Whether he be assuming the god form of Egypt or evoking the inspirations of Iacchus with the chant and dance, he has the diagram of the tree as th at the back of his mind. It is the symbolism of the tree that Western initiates are drilled and it supplies the essential ground plans of classification to which all other systems can be related. The ray upon the Western aspirations works has manifested itself through many different cultures and developed a characteristic technique in each. The modern initiate works a sin synthetic system, sometimes used an Egyptian, a Greek, or even a Druidic method, for different methods are best suited for different purposes and conditions. In all cases, however, the operation he designs is strictly related to the paths of the tree of life of which he is master. If he possesses the grade which corresponds to the Sephira Netzach, he can work with the manifestation of the force of that aspect of the Godhead, disting distinguished by the Kabbalists by the name of the Tetragrammaton Elohim. In whatever system he may select, in the Egyptian system, it is, it will be the Isis of nature. In the Greeks, Aphrodite. The Nordics, Freya. In Druidic, Caridwen. In other words, he possesses the power of the sphere of Venus in whatever traditional system he may be using. 
Having attained a grade in one system, he has access to the equivalent grades of all other systems of the tradition. But although he may use these other systems as occasional sir serves, experience proves that the Kabbalistic supplies the best groundwork and the best system upon which to train a student before he ex begins to experiment with the pagan systems. The Kabbalah is essentially monotheistic. The potencies it classifies are always regarded as messengers of God and not his fellow workers. This principle enforces the concept of a centralized government of the cosmos and of the grip of the divine law upon the whole of manifestation. A very necessary principle with which to imbue any student of the arcane forces. It is the purity, sanity, and clarity of the Kabbalistic concepts as resumed in the formula of the Tree of Life, which makes the glyphs such an admirable one for the meditations that, which exalt consciousness and justify us in calling the Kabbalah the Yoga of the West. And that is the end of chapter two, I believe it was. Yes. Tomorrow, we shall continue on with chapter three, which will be the method of the Kabbalah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed going through this. Uh, I'm enjoying going through it again. It's been a long time. It's probably been 10, 10 years, maybe more than 10 years since I've read this. So, But it's a, it's a good one. So, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you again tomorrow, hopefully. And you have a wonderful day.